Hello and welcome to this tutorial. Uh, it's been a while since we did our last video and uh, basically we were looking at uh, deploying uh, Django uh, project on Heroku and uh, there are various updates that I made on this project uh, that uh, whose link is on the description. Uh, it's uh, on GitHub and I've also cloned it in my local machine and I'm using uh, PyCharm. So these are some of the updates that I made. So we have this folder here, the starting folder that has uh, the initialization script for the database. So when the database container starts, then it runs this uh, script. Uh, this is what you refer to as a entry point. We have added it to the entry point of the database uh, container. Then uh, we have also separated the settings. Uh, for this project and uh, basically we have two settings we have uh, the base settings which are the normal configuration for Django and also we have the local settings as well and the production settings so if uh, let me just take a quick look let's take a quick look of the production and the local settings so you may notice that we have a, a few differences you may notice that we have a few differences and uh, one of the differences is that we have the development uh, the project environment and then in this other one we have the production and uh, among other things you notice that we have white noise which we are using for our static management in the local uh, setting and uh, in the production setting we have like uh, we have white noise we also have the AWS S3 bucket, and we also have the Cloudinary uh, settings, all that have been configured here. And then we have some of the settings that we added in our previous video under uh, uh, SSL, uh, the ones that we added, we were referring to when we were looking at the Django deployment uh, checklist. So you may also refer that to our previous video. And then we also have the email hosts, uh, email settings, and uh, there's an addition that I made here for content security policy uh, that is managed or it's being handled by the Django CSP, CSP third party plugin. Yeah, so th those are some of the changes. And then we have, um, we have the, in the users file, uh, not the users, but the website app, uh, we created uh, fixtures, what you call the initial fixtures. So whenever you run your application, you can run, uh, execute these fixtures. Basically what this script does is that it creates a custom a user. Uh, you, can, you can even notice the password field here. It creates two users, one who is the admin and the other one who is not. And then it also creates blog posts. Uh, so that is uh, another addition that we made. And then, and it actually comes in handy when you do your, when you are testing uh, or creating a test driven development. Uh, and also we have the, or initializing your database. So we also have the Docker Ignore. Uh, we also have this editor config, which is a cross editor a configuration. For example, in this last line, we are telling uh, this editor uh, to indent, to use tab indentation for the make file and also to trim trailing white spaces in uh, markdown files uh, that and the, that have the .md extension. And then we have the environment file, which contains the environment variable. So this is my local environment variable file. And that's why um, I'm just showing it to you. But uh, in a production setup, these some of these things like the secret key should be hidden or should be uh, not exposed to the public. So I have created a template for the environment variable file for the local, um, uh, the local setup, and also another one for the production setup. And then I've also uh, we also have the .git ignore. I think this one has already been there, uh, has all along been there. And then we have the development uh, Docker files and the production Docker files, which are populated with uh, more information. First of all, I have upgraded it to Postgres uh, 15. That is a database that I'm using. And I've also made some additions here on the environment variables for the user, specific user. And then I've created a health check, uh, which normally checks uh, if the, uh, this service is healthy uh, before proceeding. 
and then we also have the the initialization script that I've just shown you, uh, and then we also have the volumes, and uh, for the web, uh, we have made I've also made an addition here whereby I'm running the database URL, um, and also the uh, Django settings module, which points to the local settings, and this is for the specifically for the local setup. And then we also have uh, this depends on. Uh, normally, it has it checks whether the database is healthy so that it can be able to to run. So if it's not healthy, then uh, this service will not uh, uh, proceed. And then we also on this other side we have uh, the same a similar configuration. But you'll notice that in this case, for the Django settings module, it points to the production setup. So yeah, so that is what we have. And then we also have the Docker file. Uh, so for the Docker file, we have uh, we have added uh, some some layers or some commands. And in this case, we have this command that uh, creates the user. So according to Docker best practices, it's not uh, recommended to run. You are, normally it runs as root, but it's not recommended. Yeah, because if, for example, if I gain access, uh, root access to your container, uh, let's say you have even exposed it to the, the port to the internet, and maybe I have, in, somehow I know how to, I would be able to access it, then I can be able to execute malicious commands as the root user. Uh, and uh, so that's why it's a uh, recommended practice to create a standard user to manage or to run your app. And in this case, I've also added some few commands here, uh, whereby I've created the home directory or the working directory, and then I've created the static and media files. And then there's also another difference. You'll notice that in my production Docker file, I do not have these uh, dash dev. So this is because I'm installing the production or the, yeah, the production packages. But in this case, I'm installing the development packages that are listed in the pip file log for the docker file dot really we are going to look at it uh, later and then we also have this make file that are populated with multiple commands so this make file saves a lot of hassle when executing your commands um, and i've also tried and documented what each and every command does yeah and then let's look at the pip file so the pip file uh, contains a list of it's deterministic, and that's why I prefer it as uh, again it's the virtual environment uh, because you can be able to control or you can be able to set up the specific versions of the packages that you want to install. And in this case, uh, these are the pro packages that are used in production, and these are packages that are used only in the local setup. So these ones are used both in the locally and also uh, in the production. Some of them are only used in the production but we have uh, these which are these ones which are used in the development uh, setup so we are not going to go into much detail into it uh, this is a log file that contains the hashes and uh, the specific versions and dependencies so all this has been listed in the documentation which you can take time and try uh, review uh, i've tried my best to kind of add uh, settings and how to configure this project so now we are going to deploy, proceed in testing the deployment locally uh, in this computer. So I already have Docker, which is running on my computer. Uh, and I have, I believe I have an image for Postgres. So this is a Docker desktop. It's, uh, it has also been tweaked since our last tutorial a lot. And it has interactive user interface and uh, many other details like uh, some tutorials and some explanations of uh, what goes on. And uh, I would also recommend you to look at uh, have Windows subsystem for Linux if you're using Windows. Like in this case, I'm using uh, Windows for this task. So I'm just going to run, since I'm on Windows, I cannot, I, I have not installed Mac, so I won't install it. It's quite, uh, it may take quite some steps, but you can check in the internet how to install the Mac file. So I'm just going to execute my commands I'm just going to do some copy and paste in here. So I, the first step will be building our uh, development containers. I'm saying development because I'm using it in my local computer. So I'm just going to use this command. And notice the F, which points to the, it's a file. It tells us to use the development version of the Docker Compose. So it's going to build, and uh, we are going to re, 
wait until it completes building and you'll notice that it has uh, what they call layers, 12 layers, uh, corresponding to uh, uh, each and every command. So it's also good to look at how you structure your Docker file uh, because it uh, may affect you know performance and time that it takes to build. Yeah, and also caching. Uh, but these are concepts that you can uh, refer to the Docker documentation. So let's wait until it completes uh, building. Okay, so once the building has completed, uh, we can run the uh, run server command, uh, or rather we can start the containers using the docker compose app command. And in this case, I'll add these dash D for running them in a detached mode. And after uh, the database may take a while. So what is happening in the background, just to explain is, whenever we run the, this app command, so it's now, it has already started, uh, created the network, default uh, network, and then it has created the volume. So we have the media volume, we have the static volume and the Postgres uh, data volume. So it has created them and they have been highlighted in the Docker Compose file. And then we have uh, the container for web has already started. And uh, the container name looks like this web for my demo website because I've given it a name here, db for, sorry, web for, and it takes the compose project name from the environment variable. So you can name your containers however you want. So it has already started. Uh, and the, and uh, this confirms that the database uh, uh, process or the database service is healthy. So we can, our next step will be to check the logs, which is very, very important. And I can also add a dash F to check the logs interactively. Yeah, so this is what happens when we run the initial, uh, when you start your container initially. So it has run this file, the init.db shell script, and it has created, altered, and does all, all that it should do, or all that we have instructed it to do here. Uh, so the next step will be to start our services. Oh, we have already started our services, sorry. So I'm going to navigate into my browser and uh, check on the local hosts. Uh, local host. Yeah, and we have our website running. So, and you'll notice that we have a something on the side here. This is a Django debug toolbar uh, that is used in uh, testing uh, your application. So, uh, let me just do a refresh. So, this is a site. This is how it looks like. Uh, not changed anything yet. And the one thing you'll notice is that when I click on the articles page, you're going to get an error. This is because I'm not added any blog posts, yeah. So, and also you are seeing this error because this is in development. So in production, so, uh, you have to set your debug into false. So you are not going to see this. You may probably going to see some error for for if that has been configured. So let me minimize the setting and then I'll, the next step will be populating. So I'll make use of the Django fixtures. And uh, in this case we have, uh, let me just use the make file and copy. Uh, we have just load initial data. So I'll load initial data from this JSON file. So just doing a copy and paste. Okay. So yeah, so we are getting this error because I've not run the migrate command. I've not created the database uh, schema. So I need to run this command before I uh, run the, the other command for this one for loading uh, initial data. So if you have worked with Django applications, you are familiar with the migration and make migrations uh, command. So I'm going to load our initial data. And um, yeah, it has already installed eight objects from uh, a single fixture. 
So let me refresh my blog page and now you'll see the blog page, uh, the blog is already there. So you can imagine uh, this, I find this quite interesting because you can be able to load your data. If you have initial data, you can be able to load it. You can be able even to create custom users and, and what have you. So those are some of the things that you can do uh, nevertheless. So we have been able to run our, our uh, blog locally. Uh, so in the next steps, we are going to look at how we can, oh, I also forgot to tell you that I added an API. So this API kind of gives an output of the blog posts. You can also access them, view them in a JSON format. Uh, you can also test them using a REST API or an API client like Postman. Yeah, but basically this is just an API for uh, viewing, uh, viewing the, reading the uh, blog posts. And yeah, so this is what we have. Uh, let me just close and uh, we, we are going to look at how we can deploy these in the, in a railway. Uh, platform as a service.